how do we get out of feeling controlled by unsolicited advice? Unsolicited advice can put us in a weird position, right? You don't have to be aggressive, but you can assert your boundary and let individuals know, no, this is not how it works in my world. At some point we have to trust ourselves and in what we're doing. And, and this is where that separation of unsolicited advice and feedback is so important. It doesn't mean that you're not open to differing perspectives or being challenged. It just means that hate has no place in your life. That's why we're bringing up these tools of how to differentiate, how to set your boundaries, how to be assertive while also being loving. In our last podcast, we talked about feedback and how uncomfortable it can be to ask for it, receive it, and things that we can do to navigate through that. But we also often receive a lot of unsolicited advice as an organization, and especially one that's out on social media so strongly. And we wanted to talk about the difference between feedback and unsolicited advice because often they get mixed up, right? And we as people feel like we should just take unsolicited advice the same way we take feedback, that it's one and the same. And as an organization and as individuals who are kind of the face of the organization as of now, we get a lot of unsolicited advice. And we thought it was important to share that there is a difference. There's a very, very strong difference and how you respond to it is different as well. So if you're willing to dive into that with me, and there are a few other things too, like the difference between sharing your perspective and hate speak and how that takes on a different life, especially out on social media. I feel like that's something so important to share and why that should and could be addressed in a very different way. So we're going to get down into it today because as we start to open ourselves up to receiving feedback and to receiving other people's perspectives, what's that line, right? And how do we walk it and still be respectful? Yeah. And this is important because we've all been there, whether it's family, friends, uh, work, uh, you know, school, <laughs> I mean, you name it, anything that we have growing up or to, to the point where we are now, uh, we've all gotten unsolicited advice, <laughs> Yes, you know, and, and oftentimes it's coming from a very loving place. And it's amazing that people are willing to take the time to share their thoughts. That means that they're, you know, we've talked about this before when they're paying attention to you, that means they're, they're, they're investing, right? They're investing into you by offering that. So it's, it's most of the time coming from a great place of love and care because maybe they, they want you to succeed. I mean, that's a great, that's a great thing. We, we all want to have family and friends and organizations and work and all, all wanting us to succeed. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yes. Um, but maybe. But maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, maybe we didn't ask for it. Hence the term unsolicited advice. <laughs> yes. And so it's how do we deal with that? How do we lovingly deal with that? I mean, someone does give you know advice, and like you know, instead of us kind of being like, "Well, I didn't ask for that," or and then that that coming off wrong, or you know, kind of unsolicited advice can put us in a weird position, right? It's like, okay, yes. Well, thank you, friend, family, or whatever uh, this is coming from. But I didn't ask for it. You know, I'm I'm happy or maybe I'm confident with where I'm at right now. And, or maybe I'm going a completely different uh, trajectory and I have a clear vision of what I want to do. And this advice is coming from a place of lack of knowledge or lack of awareness mm -hmm. or not seeking to understand. And the intention and the care and the love and the support is pure. And that's not what's at stake here. But when oftentimes this information or this advice is, advice is forced or pushed, yes, that's where we start to get into a little bit of a gray area, a lot of bit of a gray area. A here. lot of bit. And so, uh, yeah, that's definitely what I want to dive into today. Yes. And when it 
keeps repeating, like, I told you to do this. I told you to do this. And look what's happening. Well, there's an energy behind that, right? It's a control energy. And when we start to feel controlled, then it does something to us. So how do we get out of feeling controlled by unsolicited advice? And it doesn't matter if you're an individual or if you're an organization. It can start to feel the same way, like somebody else is coming in and attempting to steer your ship. And you need to take the helm back in many ways. But do you do it forcefully? Or is there a kind, compassionate way to do it? And I would offer there is a kind and compassionate way to do it. And if you have to, then there's an assertive way. But assert- being assertive is different than being aggressive. And we talk about this all the time. You don't have to be aggressive, but you can assert your boundary and let individuals know no, this is not how it works in my world. And so I'm taking the wheel back. I appreciate where you're coming from, but no, that's not how it happens here. It's the same in our everyday life. If, and I'm going to use my dad, my dad is an amazing human being. I'm using him because he's an amazing human being and he's going to know that this is not directed at him. But if my dad comes to me and gives me unsolicited advice about our relationship, and I'm using our relationship because it's solid and nothing is ever going to derail that. And he tells me, you need to do this in your relationship. And I tell him, thank you, dad, for your advice. But I feel things are very solid between Austin and I. And I don't feel that applies right now. And then he comes back again and he comes back again and he comes back again. And each time I tell him the same thing, I appreciate the advice. I don't feel that it is relative to where we are right now. If it doesn't stop, then at some point, that's where I need to be assertive, right? So I've been loving, but the communication is not being received. So now I need to be assertive and say, Dad, my relationship with Austin is my relationship with Austin. I've heard you. I've explained to you that it is where we desire it to be. And so please do not approach me with this again. And if you do, I will walk away. I will not engage in this conversation anymore. So he knows clearly that my boundary is, if you bring this up again, I'm going to walk away from you. The next time, should he bring it up again, I need to disengage and completely walk away and not hear him again. And the more I continually do that and I walk away from him every time he brings it up, then he knows that that advice is not something I'm willing to receive anymore. Right. Right. Absolutely. I mean, and another way also that's assertive is to um, mirror, right? Like, hey, I've, I've brought up multiple times that where we're at is good, but I've noticed you brought this up multiple times. Are you sure this is for me? Or is there something going on in your life that we can walk through? You know, that this, this actually may be very valuable advice for yourself, right? Also assertive. Mm-hmm. It's being, it's holding your boundary, saying, nope, I'm good. This is, I appreciate the thoughts. I've heard you. This is good. But now, hey, it's come back a couple of times. You know, is this something for you? Because I know I've been there when I've shared different advice and definitely shared my fair share of unsolicited advice. And then it's kind of been brought back to me that, oh, actually, you know, I, I didn't see the blind spot in myself. And so I was sharing it to others where I saw it, but that was my perspective. It wasn't their experience, which are two very different things. And so when people kind of share back, like, hey, you know, are you sure? Are you sure it's not for you? <laughs> and oh my gosh. And uh, yeah, 
there I was like completely in my own blind spot and in my own way. And that opportunity then actually was not unsolicited advice for someone else. It was advice that was needed for me. Yes. And so, uh, you know, that's what we want to kind of navigate and walk through how to, through these different approaches, providing different ways to support your boundaries while also supporting another and let them know that they're seen, heard, and gotten. Because again, it's so imperative in, in to recognize when people are, are investing into your life and to, like, that's a beautiful thing, right? Yeah. So we want to hold that up. Um, but it is important that we understand the intention and the purpose behind it and, and reflect it back. Yeah. Which goes toward the organization as well, right? When we get unsolicited advice to our organization, whether it's one-on-one, when we do any kind of an event and individuals so lovingly offer wonderful unsolicited advice, and we do love it. So it's not as though we're saying, please don't give us unsolicited advice. We love it. That's how we get feedback that we may not know to ask for. So we're not saying unsolicited advice is necessarily a negative thing. It isn't. It is a very beneficial thing. However, when unsolicited advice turns into a pattern of constant continuation, right? And it comes from a, I know best and you're not listening to me then it starts to flip that script a little bit, right? And we have to understand how to address that. So there's ways that unsolicited advice can be such a gift and we recognize it when it's a gift and we utilize it as that gift, especially if you're an organization. And we look across our community and we're like, thank you. Thank you so much for seeing gaps that we have yet to see and if we can identify that identify them take it in and utilize that to grow stronger and better which is different than feedback when we send out surveys or we ask for information however when we get unsolicited advice on posts or things and someone sends the same comment upward of 500 times mm-hmm. and tells us that we are not listening when we have communicated with the individual multiple times, letting them know we hear you, we see you, we understand, given our trajectory, this will not be able to be addressed at this time, but we see the value on what we're saying. Then at a certain point, there must be a boundary set, even as an organization to say, We cannot continue to navigate in this direction. And therefore, as much as we honor you as a community member, we ask that you take a step back and honor where we are in our community and organization direction. That in order to serve the whole, the one, may not be able to be served as a unique one. And it's not always easy, right? And so even as a person in a family unit, the same thing would apply, right? Unsolicited advice coming into a family, if you're a family and one person on the outside is telling you how your family dynamic should work, If they don't have a family, sometimes it's more challenging, right? So we always have to be willing to look at things in the context of the whole. Mm -hmm. And that's how we do. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Um, Or if their family is just different, then, then, you know, it's like they're, they're coming at it from a perspective of what they understand. Like maybe, maybe they do have a family and it works a certain specific way and that all connects with them and they have a hard time understanding how, you know, your family works, for example. It's like, okay, it may not always translate in that same way. And so uh, I just want to be specific in terms of, you know, just it may not be advice from someone who doesn't have a family or doesn't have the same situation, but it could be, it just might be very, very different. And so 
that's where holding that boundary, like you're saying, is just so beautiful and important. Uh, and again, not from a, a you know, ivory tower or um, you know, I'm better than you in in that sense of, of, of holding a boundary because that's that's egoic. Right. That's not necessarily holding a boundary. That's that's holding yourself above another, which is a very very different thing. And so it, this is about self love. This is about respecting. This is about mutual respect, and when we can take the time to clearly communicate that, you know, that's that's what we're kind of helping unfold, um, because unsolicited advice can happen continually, mm-hmm. um, and that's where it's like, okay, well, okay, I know what to do maybe in the first couple, and I can be nice and I can you know, say thank you, but you know, no thank you, or or just say thank you and, and move along. Um, but yeah, it's tough when it just keeps coming and kind of almost becomes a berating or um, you know, even to a degree virtue sig- signaling. Yes. Right? That's another aspect of it. Um, and so, you know, on an individual level or maybe at your work or in your relationship or, um, you know, there's so many situations that we're all in that other people are outside looking in and they're not seeking to understand. They're not seeking to uh to place themselves in our shoes, for example, and they're kind of casting judgment or virtue signaling or saying this way is better or this way is the way and you are not doing that. Mm-hmm. We have to understand that that's not actually advice. And that's the part of it. We, when we, even though it's maybe under the categorization of unsolicited advice, mm-hmm. that's not advice. That's just someone, that's just an opinion. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. People can have opinions. We're not here to stop or silence opinions. That's not that's not helpful. But it, just because someone has an opinion and shares it doesn't mean you know we have to listen. Right. You know we can. I mean we can under we can listen or we can whether it's a comment we can read it. Or we can also choose not to read it. You know, there's plenty of people who have uh, large social followings who just say, "Look, I I post something, or or I share something, and then I don't look at the comments." Because oftentimes the vast majority of them are negative, but you know they're helping a lot of people at the same time. And those people that they are helping, then that's really making a difference in their lives, and that's what's important. And so at some point we have to trust ourselves and in what we're doing. And and this is where that separation of unsolicited advice and feedback is so important, right? If you're asking for for that feedback and you're getting it back, saying yes, I am helping. And, and and what we're doing is helping, whether at work or in the relationship or in the family and all that. Trust it. Yes. And I think what you mentioned with the some some unsolicited advice being more of an opinion, oftentimes than actual advice, that connection to seeking to understand, it is very hard for me to give you advice. If I know nothing about the situation or the circumstance, therefore, if I'm just constantly coming back to you and saying, I've observed this and here I'm shoving my perspective at you, my observation and my opinion of what I'm observing, that's just an observational opinion. It's not necessarily advice. Because advice is a conversation. And very rarely is what we're talking about that it is more of that I'm on the outside looking in and I have a judgment of what is occurring. So make that connection. A big tip is to step back. And if it's coming at you over and over and over again, is it that? Wherever it is coming from, maybe that individual feels a loss of control in their own life. And this is a way for them to, in some ways, have a sense of direction somehow, somewhere. And understandable. We all sometimes feel as though we don't have a sense of direction of our own lives. But if I can see something else clearly, then maybe I can help steer that and I'll feel like I have a sense of control somewhere. I have a sense of direction somewhere. I see what they don't see. 
So I can fix that. I can't fix this, but I can fix that. And if you, as the one receiving this, can step back and go, maybe that's what's occurring in their life, then it at least helps you not take it so personally and not relinquish the helm of your own life, right? Don't let go of your own steering. Yeah, absolutely. And I I think you really highlighted a a super skill that's so important when navigating unsolicited advice, feedback, any of this, and that is the ability to filter. Yeah. And because like you said, unsolicited advice may come in. You didn't ask for it, but it comes, it's going to come in. It's going to happen. It just, there's no way around it. Yes. But if we can effectively learn how to take the parts of it, like may, maybe we did have a blind spot, as you were talking about earlier, and this does actually fill a gap. And we could be like, whoa, what a pattern interrupt. Like, okay, maybe, maybe it was or wasn't delivered in the best way. But how do we pull ourselves back, as you're saying, and reflect on it and use some of the tools from the previous podcast in terms of feedback? And start to understand, like seek to understand ourselves. You know, is this coming forward, especially if it's continual? A lot of things that come forward continually are for a reason. It's because we're not paying attention to it. And it's like continuing, like, hey, you know, uh, <laughs> tapping on the shoulder, like, hey, I'm here. There's something, there's something for you. You know, and sometimes we're just so caught up and in our own way that we're not necessarily listening. And sometimes it has to be something really really big like when i brought up a couple podcasts ago about my my back injury right yeah you know there was it was things that were coming forward and i wasn't listening i wasn't listening and all of a sudden i had to come out and it just had to be this massive you know big injury that almost left me debilitated in order for me to listen and shift my life you know um (laughs) that i could have not let it get to that point and so i'm gonna pull you know what is my what is my uh, relationship to that you know i can and i can um i can understand where i fit in that picture and so it's it's important to to kind of take responsibility in that aspect mm-hmm. and say okay well if these things are coming forward you know is it because someone is wanting to be helpful and just doesn't know how to do it in in a way that is actually helpful And is there something for me to learn here? Or is this actually just uh, a pushing of opinion without a lot of uh, effort in seeking to understand? Yeah. Which is a tool in itself, right? Because we do desire to take the unsolicited advice if it's beneficial for us and if we can grow from it. But filtering is a key aspect. If it is someone who is just out of feeling out of direction themselves and seeking to find their direction through someone else, then it may not be in your best interest to let them find direction through you. Mm. You can take the nuggets that are beneficial. Always. There's always benefit in every experience something you can take from it there's always a little nugget mm-hmm. always but you don't desire to let them take the helm because the further you step away from your own helm and let anything take over steering the easier it is to lose your own direction and so Yes, it's like having a co-pilot or a navigator. You can say, all right, I hear you. I'm not due north and I need to be. I'll take that. Or you can say, "Ah, I think your direction might be a little bit off. Check your compass, right? But don't hand over the wheel unless it's someone that you utterly trust with your life and you absolutely need the break. Right. And you've taken the time to more or less indoctrinate them in terms of what's actually what the situation is. Mm-hmm. And they can come at it from a fully educated experience and understanding of it. Uh, so it's like to keep, you know, you could hand the wheel, but if, if they didn't already know the direction, you could be going a completely different way. Yeah. Right. 
So you know, if you showed them the map or told them where you're going and they knew how to get there with you and then they can take over the wheel, then great. And then you're, you're in a good spot just to kind of continue on that, um, yeah. that analogy. Um, it, it's also an opportunity if it does continue to come forward, especially if it's like a, a family member. Um, and it keeps happening, you know, I, I continue to hear this, this saying, and, and I think it's so important and, and that's hurt people, hurt people. So if this individual is, is continually offering this type of device and it is negative and it's constantly coming out, maybe it's a cry for help. Maybe it's not, a, it's not, maybe the option isn't to, to, to walk away or to, you know, ask a bunch of questions or, you know, it's maybe it's just, maybe they need a hug. You know, maybe they just need, maybe they just need someone to listen. And so we just don't know what exactly is going on. And so it could be a cry for, yeah, it could be a really strong cry for help and a way to just step back and maybe it has nothing to do with you or what you're doing or the situation at all. It's just a way for them to kind of get attention so that you you can help them yes just be certain it's not like the raccoon and elf oh yes right <laughs> because you might think they need a hug yes. and next thing you know you're getting torn apart <laughs> that's a that's a very good analogy yes so yes, always seek to that is yes. one you want to ask if someone is offering you unsolicited advice and you feel that they might be hurting mm -hmm. don't just walk up and give them a hug always yes. ask well, as a stranger, you like you know, we were talking about family members, so hopefully you know your family <laughs> member pretty well and you'd understand. But yes, probably still very good advice yes. <laughs> across the board. Not everyone <laughs> is in a space where they want to hug right then and there. Yes. So, yes. Um, well, we're, um, the beauty of this is attempting to, as we were talking about in the previous podcast, right, is about awareness generator. And so just like feedback is an awareness generator, so is unsolicited advice. Yes. Right? Anything that's in some ways coming from the external to the internal, it is a, uh, it can be a positive or a negative trigger for us, right? And so we can, we can have intention and purpose behind it to really understand like what is, what, why is this happening? You know, and instead of reacting, I love what you always say is just take that pause, right? That power of the pause and, and really seek to understand where this is coming from, have that filter, and then take action from that regard. Yes. Hi, I'm Amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are, it helps us more than we can possibly say. And don't be afraid to have a boundary. Yeah. That's so important, right? Yes, be loving and be compassionate, but also hold a boundary and understand how to be assertive and and not tip into aggression. Like you can, if you are someone who doesn't enjoy being hugged, right? And I'm just going to use that one because we're huggers. Mm -hmm. I'm a hugger. I have no problem with that. But I have met individuals who do not enjoy being hugged. And I honor that. It's your personal space. It's your boundary. And so honor where you are, but you don't, and I'm just going to say it, you don't have to be a dick, right? If you don't enjoy being hugged, it's okay. But you don't have to, if I ask you, do you, can I hug you? You don't have to be mean to me in the way that you say no. You can simply say, I would prefer not. And I totally get that, right? You don't have to be like me. You don't have to love hit, hugs. But you don't have to be like mean to me and berate me because I'm someone who does like hugs. Mm -hmm. And so both of us can honor our boundaries in the process and still be kind yet assertive. Mm -hmm. You can assert your boundary. I can make the request. And we're good. We walk away from there knowing that we honored who we were. And yet we're very nice to each other. And then the next time I meet you, I know, hey, you don't like hugs. You won't even ask, mm -hmm. right? And that's the thing. 
that's how we can continue through this process too. If someone is offering you unsolicited advice, you can say, I can take from it what would fit for me inside my little circle, but then I can leave what doesn't fit for me on the outside of my boundary. And I can be very assertive about holding that, but do it in a nice, loving way. That's the filter super skill right there. Right. Absolutely love that. And it does work on all the levels, on the personal level and on the professional level. And even if you run your own business, it fits on that level. Because let me tell you, when it comes to social media with a business, and if a huge part of it is that you sell something on social media or you're highly active on social media, you're going to get a lot of unsolicited advice. And it's a beautiful gift, but it can also be overwhelming. And so you have to know how to do this dance very, very well. And holding boundaries is going to be a key part of that, knowing how to take the nuggets out of that unsolicited advice and not feel like it's a negative slight at you. But for those that are negative slights at you, and this will transition us into the next part, which is the difference between hate speech and people providing their opinions or their feedback or their unsolicited advice. You have to be unwilling to navigate through and ask yourself those questions and understand those different layers, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, If you're not quite good at differentiating them right now, there are great tools. ChatGPT is a phenomenal one. You can copy and paste a comment or, uh, you know, if you get a comment or an email or something, or even what someone said, if you're able to remember it and share it and just ask ChatGPT, hey, if someone said this to me uh, without any context, you know, help me understand, would this be considered uh, based on inflection? And you know, maybe, they won't, maybe it won't be full inflection and tone because that's a big aspect of it relative mm-hmm. to just text. Um, but, you know, if you could, as much as you can paint the picture as possible and share the experience and share what's been received back, just like, hey, is this hate speech considerably? Or is this, you know, uh, unsolicited advice or constructive criticism? Or, you know, there are tools to help us understand, especially in this beginning stages, because things can feel like a person. I mean, a lot of, if, if we allow it, a lot of things can feel like a personal slight. We can mm-hmm. take everything personally if we, if we want to, um, and to some degree that puts us into that victim mentality. And then that ends up really putting us down a negative spiral that is not helpful. Yeah. And so that's why we're bringing up these tools of like, you know, how to, how to differentiate, how to set your boundaries, how to be assertive while also being loving. Cause being loving doesn't just mean roll over. Yeah. You know, that's, nope. that's a huge, huge <laughs> misunderstanding. This is not just, okay, I'm loving and I'll, I'll let everyone, you know, stomp on me. No. That is not, that's not loving because that's not loving to yourself. Right. So loving is a two-way street. It's to you and to those around you. And so when we have these different tools to help us differentiate and understand, then it's important. And then we can then take the next step. If it is hate speech, then we can then know what we need to do to uphold our boundaries. And when we start to communicate what those boundaries are, that's actually a very, very good thing. Because it creates the community that you desire to experience in the life that you desire to experience. And it's not coming from an ego or a virtue signaling standpoint, but it's a, a way to express where you're at. Because most people are doing things because they just don't know what the boundaries haven't been clearly communicated yeah. in the first place. And so oftentimes it's just a, a, a misunderstanding. Yes. They're sharing something because. There wasn't something in place to say that they could or couldn't or should or shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And so like kind of like our bulldog who constantly pushes the boundaries, if we we don't, if we don't, you know, set them. And then once we do and we reinforce them and we continue that, well, then everything is good. And if we lax on it, trust me, I have, he's very, very cute. And I've totally, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll let something go. And then the next time he'll push it and then it's like, oh, that's on me. And we've gone as far as for Suivera, the organization that the Heart Leader podcast 
is part of, it's our parent organization, on our Facebook page, we've put in there that if you place hate speech in a comment anywhere, it will be immediately deleted. We scrub our comments. And it's not that we won't let somebody host a differing opinion. Mm -hmm. We have no problem with differing opinions. Actually, we encourage different points of view, different perspectives, a very at depth. We love our community members to have discussions where different ideas are exchanged. And that happens all the time. We have a lot of really great conversations. They're respectful. They are great exchanges where everyone engaged learns from one another and they can agree to disagree, right? Not everyone agrees at the end of it, but the moment that it teeters over into hate speech, and we've had some of this where they come at another community member for a position whether it be their race, their religion, anything like that. It is not acceptable. That is not the community that we are building here. You are free to do that somewhere else. It's a choice you can make and we honor it, but it is not a choice that is part of our community. If you are in here, our community fosters love upliftment, compassion toward one another. And we're going to have discussions around differing opinions in a way that we gain insight. And if we end up saying, I can't get in alignment with that, it's okay. And we leave that discussion going, well, they have one perspective, I have another, and that's good. That's what adds spice to this wonderful world that we have. But we don't call each other names, and we definitely don't subjugate one another. And so you know that coming in. You know if you post something like that, it's going to be deleted. And I don't make an apology for that. It's exactly who we are. We know who we are. And it's been interesting to see how the community thrives from our perspective when Hate is removed from it. Yeah, and is you know, one of our our, our walks mm-hmm. that we that we regularly do. We and we brought this up a couple of times, but for anyone new listening, we had this really deep discussion about you know is hate the opposite of love? And we, through the realization that it's actually ignorant from our perspective, uh, we felt that it was actually ignorance, and ignorance breeds hate, and. And ignorance so, breeds fear. And, and ignorance breeds fear, correct. And so what we're seeking to do is through through the approach is to expand awareness uh, so that when we limit ignorance, then hate and fear are limited. And when we grow love, things like compassion, empathy, sympathy, connection, unity, oneness, uh, sense I mean, of safety, sense of safety, clarity. I mean, all these beautiful words and feelings and experiences start to flourish mm-hmm. because of the absence of ignorance. And, you know, to a degree, we're not saying that you, you should just know everything. Like, that's not, that's, that's not where we're coming from with this. That's not lack the point. Of ignorance, yeah. yeah. It's not, it's not that we're shutting down because just because you don't know that's that, that's not it at all. It's being self-aware of our own, you know, hey, the reason why we want to have disagreements is because we understand that just because two people disagree doesn't mean it has to be a conflict. Right. We can have differencing, differentiating differences, differences of, of opinion. Differences of opinion. That's what I meant to say. Differences of opinions. And that can actually, that's not a bad thing. That can expand our awareness. That can take us out of ignorance. You know, ignorance is because we just didn't even know it existed, right? right. And so we we are we are growing, and from that we can gather that knowledge, and that can help us grow even further. That's exciting. That's 
fun. That is, that is, to me is love. I mean, that's us showing each other what's possible in an unlimited universal structure that is like, we have all the things that we could experience. There's so much more love that we could even, like, we can't even imagine that yet. That's yet to come. Yes. That's exciting. Yeah. And to me, ignorance isn't about knowledge. Mm. It's completely different. Yeah. Ignorance is a closed heart and a closed mind. Mm. And when you open your heart and you open your mind, then anything is possible. Ignorance fades away. That's all that our community stands for. When you become a heart leader and you enter into the Suivera community, you do so with an open heart and an open mind and a willingness to see what else is possible in your life. And from there, limitless opportunities are open. That's the joy of this. And when it comes to differing opinions, well, it's just that. Like, there are so many potentials that are available. It's just that we're on different paths. And so our view is different. And it's okay, mm -hmm. right? You're not going to be on the same path that I'm on. So our view is going to be different. And it's phenomenal. The view from where you're at is probably pretty epic. And the view from where I'm at is pretty epic. And so let's share the view. Let's share what we're seeing. And one day I might decide to go look at things from your view. And that'll be pretty incredible too, because you'll have already painted a picture and I'll be like, uh, this was what he was seeing. Okay, I get it now. And I'll at least have had a little bit of a map so I'm not thrown off when I get there, right? That's the beauty of this. And sometimes I feel like that's where unsolicited advice comes from too, right? Like I'm seeing something that you're not seeing. And so I'm going to provide it, which if once could be very helpful, if multiple times isn't. and. Hate speech generally comes from a closed heart or a closed mind. And if that's not what you desire to have in your life, then you have the freedom to delete it from your feed and to curate the feed if you're on social media that has the same open heart, open mind feel that you are seeking to create, right? That's the beauty of choice. And social media offers you so many choices that if that's the direction you want to go, then start curating your own feed to offer that for you. And know that you have the power to delete anything like we do that isn't in alignment with that. Set your boundary to that, right? It doesn't mean that you're not open to differing perspectives or to being challenged. It just means that hate has no place in your life. Absolutely. Kind of like the, um, there are restaurants that have no shoe, no shirts, no shoes, no service. No service, right? right, yeah. It's not like they're discriminating against people with no shirt or no shoes. It's just saying, hey, in this establishment, this is, this is what is the boundary. There are plenty of other restaurants that may not have that sign. You can go eat there. It's, we're not stopping you from eating. This isn't the only restaurant in the world. Yeah. And so I feel like that's an important thing to understand uh, from the outside that we're not seeking to suppress or uh, silence, you know, people or their thoughts or their opinions or anything. And this goes for not just us, but for for a lot of individuals out there, whether it's themselves or organizations who are holding their boundaries. Because right now there's kind of this this fluctuation around what it means to hold a boundary. And sometimes when people are holding their boundaries, they're kind of being they're being criticized for it. It's really important to recognize that not always, yeah. maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes it is oppression or suppression, or and that's yeah. important to understand and differentiate. But there are plenty of organizations and individuals out there that are just seeking to hold their boundary and share. This is what this is. This is the cure. This is my just like you're curating a social media feed. This is what I'm curating in my feed of life. 
Yeah. It's that old saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Yeah. I haven't right? heard that. Yeah. It's uh, where I grew up. It was a big saying. Mm. And it's true. We have to understand what we stand for, what is important to us. And once we know that, then we can in, have those boundaries that reinforce that. And of course, what we stand for changes mm -hmm. throughout life, right? It changes. And so therefore our boundaries will expand or some will drop off or whatever happens. That's, that's okay. That's beautiful. But we know what we stand for in this moment. And why wouldn't an organization know the same? And there's nothing wrong with that. We have to be willing to honor the boundaries of others as we honor the boundaries that we have set for ourselves. And if we don't agree with the boundaries, that's fine. Then just step away. And if it's an organization, then don't vote for them with your money. Just don't buy stuff from them. It's okay. Or don't watch, don't consume their content or however you desire to do it. It's okay. It's okay to hold your boundary by not taking part in what they stand for. But don't criticize them for doing the very thing that you desire to do, which is hold your own boundary. Choice is such a beautiful thing, and it speaks so loudly. Yeah. Well said. I think that that segues beautifully into kind of one last thing to to circle back to is that we we strongly feel that it's never one way um, that every interaction is two way street whether we're consciously aware of it or not that's a whole different conversation yes um, but when it comes to unsolicited advice and receiving it we also have to be aware of the unsolicited advice that we're giving yes and. It can almost go, you know, I, I, I do my best, you know, uh, even though I know I just said somewhat of a, <laughs> of an absolute, I do my best not to, not to speak in absolute. Sometimes it just comes out because I'm passionate. Um, and, and it's never, I know it's, maybe it's never, maybe it is always, I, I don't know. The point is, is that a vast majority of times, um, I, I, or I would, I would guess, I would estimate that a vast majority of people have given unsolicited advice in their life, at least at some point. Mm -hmm. And, and so when it, when it's coming from a loving place from our, you know, we feel it's a loving place. It's hard to count that as unsolicited advice. It's hard to make that connection point, that realization that it might be coming off that way. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I kind of want to make sure that we, we discuss that it is important in this process as we're having all these tools and these filters to help us understand how to how to navigate unsolicited advice to us, we at the same time have to have personal responsibility to be at, you know, equally, so we're not hypocritical in our approach, that we are equally you know, putting the effort into understanding that we're, we're not doing the very thing that we're seeking or telling others not to do for us, for example. Heck yeah. Yeah. As a mom, I do it all the time to my or son. <laughs> it just becomes a pattern as a parent, right? Because you're consistently, as they're growing up, helping to guide them. And then all of a sudden, they don't need your guidance because they're an adult. And you're like, oh, that's supposed to stop. <laughs> and that guidance becomes unsolicited advice. And maybe they don't necessarily desire that. Right. And so that's the quickest, easiest way for me to make that connection, because then I had to learn the super skill of saying, hey, son, I'm noticing something here. Would you like me to share my observation or would you like to just kind of learn your way through it, have the experience? Sometimes he says, I'm good. And he keeps on going. And sometimes he says, yeah. Do you want to let me know what you're saying? And then I'll share my perspective. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah, that's good. Or he's like, no, I'm still good. 
but at least then it is the, hey, I'm noticing something and would you like to receive it? And he has a choice at that point versus it being unsolicited. It's a, it's a conscious choice. Now I still slip up. I'm not going to lie. Absolutely. We all do. But at least at that point, I'm giving more often than not, I'm giving him a choice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and this isn't about being perfect. This yeah. is about being aware. This is about being conscious, about being intentional and purposeful as best as we possibly can. And the more we can breathe that into what we do, even if it is you know, the way that we show and share love, that could be through offering advice. You know, when you see someone you love and you see that they're struggling, and you can clearly see their blind spot, but they can't. That's such a difficult position. Yeah. Because you want to care, you want to just like pick them up and you know say, "Hey, it's right, it's right here." You know, Why this can't is it, you, you know? say it? Yeah. yeah. And, and so, I mean, we, you know, this it's such it's, it's a tough one. You know, it really is. Yeah, and but so, how do you learn best? Yes. Right. 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 And so, for us to be able to learn how to effectively, you know, share advice in a way that it doesn't become unsolicited. And that we can bring someone else into the fold to make their choice. You know, just that little, that little extra differentiation can make all the difference in the world in terms of the relationship and the experience and the understanding. And giving people choice, which I feel is, you know, personally for me, I feel like that is one of the greatest gifts we've ever been gifted. Um, to me, that's like autonomy and choice independent like in that type of independence in that way allows us to understand who we are you know for for me just my belief is that that is like us understanding our, our divine creativity within ourselves for others that may be something very very different in how they would describe it which is beautiful as well but that's that's such an incredible gift and so we can when we can offer someone a choice that's us saying like i see you in that and i respect you enough to to make a choice for yourself in whatever it is yeah and it's like it's such a it's such love and respect when we offer that and so you know as i'm talking about it i'm even saying wow you know that's a scenario that i need probably more advice into myself you know <laughs> to just to be more aware and like how how can i how can i show someone else that i see them in the divine creator that i feel that they are and 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 show them the ultimate love that they are like i see them as love what's the most loving thing i can do in that moment how can i be the most loving being i can be and that's to offer them choice and so if i do have something advice that i see something in you know can i just simply say like, you know hey i've noticed something you know are you open to a thought or not yeah it can just be that it can be casual it doesn't have to be you know this whole thing it can just be very casual and if they say yes and they're opting into it and then I can offer it, great. And if they say no, then I, I have to understand that I'm not, it's not a personal hit. That maybe they're supposed to go through whatever experience that it is to help them become the very best version of themselves. And if I just forced my thought or opinion on them and they didn't go through it, well, then I'm robbing them of that experience that they needed to become the very best version of themselves. And who am I to say that? Exactly. That's just ego. Yes. Some of the things that were the most challenging things in my life are the very things that made me stronger. And other people were like, why are you doing that? Oh my gosh. And lots of unsolicited advice around that. And, you know, even when it was happening, I couldn't have told you why. No? Well, hello, little friend. <laughs> if anyone saw that. Um, <laughs> A little gnat for anyone who isn't watching this just flew right up in my face and was like, hello. Um, so Not maybe he was giving me advice. unsolicited advice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. But, you know, as you're navigating it, sometimes you don't even know why you're doing it. It's just something that you know is on your life path, maybe, for those who have that belief. It's just something that's there to spur your soul on to the next and it's like lifting weights right it is a strength builder 
And yes, even you might know at that time that it's not smart. It's so not smart to be doing it. But it's something that's going to add character. You're going to learn from. And so you just need to do it, to navigate through it, to get the strength that you need to be prepared for the next phase. And so that's kind of a key element as well. And you're right. If we're one of the ones giving the unsolicited advice and we're just like, what are you doing? We have to be willing to take that step back and go, maybe this is a strength builder for them. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is a soul strength builder. And I just need to, it's a soul strength builder for me too. One, to learn how to keep my mouth to myself. Right? Yes. So. Well said, I love. Always key. And we have lots of tips on other podcasts that will always help when it comes to those soul strength builders too, because there are tons of lessons in our lives that will always give us an opportunity to find that soul strength and watching people that we care about navigate things in life is definitely one of those. So I encourage anyone listening to this, if you haven't gone back through podcasts. There are lots of them that can help support that. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. If this message uh, or ideas, these tips resonate with you uh, and you haven't watched last week's podcast related to uh, nine tips uh, for feed, how to, how to navigate feedback, basically. Um, it's, it's a great one that really flows with this. Um, and you can definitely check out our channel. Uh, subscribe and, uh, and just just dive into the content. And if you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to share them in the comments. Let us know, like on, especially on this one. This was kind of a touchy subject. So you know, if, if it's if if you really need some assistance or guidance, or you have more that you'd like us to talk about, please share. Or if you have great tips yourself um, that you can add to it and help us build our library and support the community, please please share. It makes uh, it makes a world of difference and. And we'll know that it's not coming from a place of unsolicited advice, but actual advice that helped you. And then people can learn from that. And that's a big difference. Absolutely. We love hearing from our community.